Hi guys, this is David Negrin, host of the Script Podcast and executive director of the NYC Screenwriters Collective. I'm excited to announce that we've created a Patreon campaign for the script. Patreon is like a Kickstarter, but it allows you to give ongoing pledges every month and receive ongoing rewards. Of course, the script podcast will continue to be free, but we're just asking for a little help. We release four or five podcasts a month, but we'd like to do more. We'd also like to improve our audio quality and release video podcasts with rich content. So here's how you can help. Become a patron of the script podcast and gain access to our VIP activity feed with premium content. There, you'll be able to communicate privately with myself and my co-hosts after every podcast. You can get a packet of original screenwriting guides written exclusively for members of the NYC Screenwriters Collective. You can receive our monthly tracking board preview podcast for Hollywood insider updates on big script sales and the hottest spec screenplays to hit the market. You can get access to full on-demand video of NYC Screenwriters Collective events, lectures, and panel discussions. At the highest patron levels, you can even request the film or TV series we analyze and come on the script yourself to analyze it. So please, check out all our rewards, join our inner circle. Become a patron of The Script Podcast at patreon.com slash the script. Girls... Your mother and I are getting divorced. Monogamy isn't realistic. Monogamy isn't realistic. Again. Monogamy isn't realistic. I didn't understand that word at the time, but now I know exactly what he was talking about. Oh no! Sorry, I'm not hard. I'm a little drunk. It's too big. Have you ever fucked anyone before? Where are they buried? This is The Script, the official podcast of the NYC Screenwriters Collective. I'm David Negrin, and with me tonight to analyze the new Amy Schumer comedy directed by Judd Apatow, Trainwreck, I have Cara Buller, and I have Cara. Melissa Pagnata. <laughs> Damn it. You're Let's doing great. Over. You're Let's doing start great. start over. David, you're doing great. That's no, great. we can start over. No, 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 no. It's, we're going live. <laughs> It's Cara. Oh, Buller. Name I have it Buller. spelled phonetically. Cara. Cara, I have it spelled phonetically, and I've been calling you Cara all night. You've been doing yeah. great. Yeah. Maybe I had to. You choked. It. it happens. It happens to the best it's of okay. performers. That it's... happens in comedy. Mm-hmm. His eyes. Um. So <laughs> we're gonna do. So the artists are Judd Apatow, who directed this, and Amy Schumer has the sole writing credit on this, wow. which is interesting. Impressive. Um. Mm-hmm. I want to, you know, we do TV and film podcasts and we talk about comedy in, in both. So it'll be interesting to talk about um, how I think, you know, you got a TV performer in the feature film realm and how that turned out. Um, mm-hmm. Before we get started, the script podcast has a, a Patreon campaign now, which is like a Kickstarter, but it's like ongoing. So our listeners can support us and we can give them continuous rewards and pod. Uh, premium contest for for the podcast so i hope our listeners will check out our rewards on patreon site at patreon.com the script uh but one of the ways we interact with our patrons is uh at a certain level is to ask uh, on-air questions and we got our first patron this week and i want to ask his question to the panel of experienced screenwriters devin in los angeles asked are there any screenwriting rules that at first glance seemed dumb or worthless, but ultimately turned out to be extremely useful, in your opinion. I'm sorry, could you, screenwriting Rules, tips? rules. Rules. Just like screenwriting rules that seemed dumb in the beginning. I, I, I can go first while you guys are thinking. The first thing um, in the beginning people told me I didn't necessarily believe them was outline is that planning Mm -hmm. is so important in screenwriting, Um, whether it's for feature films or TV writing, but outlining is so essential when you're writing in this form because it's such a tight form. It's not like writing a novel. You can't figure out your your structure along the way. The structure is already there for you. So I knew that I, I didn't believe it in the beginning, but outlining turned out to be very important. Absolutely, I think that's a great one. Um, 
I think for me as a beginning writer, and I think this applies to a lot of writers, it's just the matter of trusting yourself. Because especially when you're starting out, you're like, you feel like you don't know what your voice is or what you think is funny, but deep down you do. And as long as it's interesting to you and honest to you, and if you trust yourself that you found an interesting story that other people can relate to, I think it's just going with that, trusting your gut and trusting yourself. Right. They say that a lot. It's harder to do yeah. than to say, right? To to see your gut and like feel it, and yeah. and then do it, even though other people don't aren't necessarily um, seconding that motion. Kara, any yeah. any rules that at first glance seemed dumb, but ultimately turned out to be useful for you as a writer? Yeah. Well, I'll, I have sort of like this story of humility, or like listening to. There was a studio that was looking at some of my stuff. They look at comedians' works, and I submitted a drama, and they're like, we're not buying dramas right now. We want comedies. That's what makes money. Mm -hmm. So do you have a comedy? And I was like, ugh, I don't like, like, I write drama. Like, don't try to control me. Like, I'm going to write what I want to write. And then it was like, uh, Cara, there's a studio. Like, they will want to work with you just follow their yeah. rules they're telling you they want to buy comedies like can yeah. you come up with the comedy and so it was so I decided okay let's explore a comedy and now today I'm working on a comedy which I'm they kind of forced me to in a way mm. but it was also like maybe the universe encouraged mm. me like the drama was based on part of my life and it was getting really intense anyway or like I didn't really need to go back there um so so this is I turned out for the best I think I think, I think you hit on something mm -hmm. that a lot of screenwriters don't realize early on is specialization people yeah. people uh screenwriters need to if they're when they're trying to break in they need to show specialization are you a comedy writer or are you a drama drama writer mm -hmm. if you write drama do you write the thriller or do you write the romantic comedy or do you uh write uh horror these things um are not there to confine you as a writer w but when you go to market the people you talk to their business only specializes in these genres so mm -hmm. they can't help you if you are a comedy writer who has a drama for them the way Kara is saying. They can't help yeah. you if you wrote a horror flick and um, they do sci-fi. The, they're not trying to confine you as a writer. They're just trying to explain to you that's their <laughs> business that they yeah. do. And the, biz the way the business works is in specialization. So that's... Absolutely. Especially in a world where everything's so much more niche now because there's so many more sources sure. that they has to be more specific in their content. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you to Devin, our first patron. Yeah. Good question, <laughs> Devin. Yeah, very good question. Um, so, train wreck, guys. Woo! <laughs> Amy Schumer gets on the uh, big screen. Uh, I'm so happy for her. Yeah. So happy for her. <laughs> so, so cool so to see this ride that yeah. she's on. And it's so great for just women writers and women comics in general. It's just, it's so. I think it was. Awesome. I think it's awesome. sort of a. It reminds me of um, the first. The, f the first Tina Fey feature film. I mean, uh, you could. See she wrote Mean Girls, but really, I think like Baby Mama was her first feature film where, that she wrote and starred in. And I really liked that film. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see Baby Mama? Yeah, that was well done. Yeah. That was extremely yeah. well done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I saw Accepted also, but I thought that was kind of. Um, eh. Didn't get to see that yet. Yeah, it's it's it's. it's eh. I heard it's not it's okay. and it's not a Tina Fey joint. You know, Baby Mama mm -hmm, was a mm -hmm, Tina Fey mm -hmm. joint. And, um, you know, to some degree, I think uh, Trainwreck was an Amy Schumer joint, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, we had Judd Apatow mm -hmm. directing, and he brings a lot to that. But um, Yeah, they have very similar voices and styles of comedy, so it was a great team. What do you mean? Uh, no, it's just like, you know, Judd Apatow usually goes for, like, that raw, very honest kind of um vulgar kind of sex comedy yes. and like that's kind of what amy is like it's it was a great well, that's, pair. that's definitely what <laughs> amy's roots voices. are which is like the 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 dirty like r-rated sex mm -hmm. related comedy stuff um but yeah. I, I think she's actually evolved to do more sophisticated stuff these days yeah a lot of social commentary yeah. satire so, very versatile um, yeah. i i felt that apatow was kind of all over this and it was almost more she was definitely she stole the show for me but i read that mm -hmm. he she originally the first draft the first script that she created was very high concept very like kind of yep. zany or bigger broader whatever and he was like 
no, no, no. Go deeper, Amy. Like, go mm -hmm. talk about your yeah. dad. Talk about relationships. Go vulnerable. Yep. And so it's a whole different movie that we're seeing. Like, if a Amy on Absolutely. her own without yeah. Apatow in the mix, I think we'd be watching a very different movie. Um, mm -hmm. So that, look, that, look at look at Apatow again being the mentor. He's Lena Dunham's mentor for girls. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. He's he's re reaching out to the the best talent out there and wants to work with them. And that shows from the casting of Trainwreck. He had oh the number <laughs> the number of cameos, the uh, amount yes. of people, comedians in Hollywood who will show up for a Judd Apatow uh, movie, even for a one day, is ridiculous. But there um, are also yeah. a lot of Amy's friends, though. Like, Bridget Everett is oh there, God, Nikki Glaser, so um, Franklin, Marina Franklin, um, yeah. Yeah, so many stand-up comedians, which is really great to watch. Yeah. yeah. I it was a lot of New York-based comedians. I think, you know, I'm going to say that I think Judd Apatow is an artist who likes to make accessible, R-rated, funny movies. And Amy Schumer mm -hmm. was started her career as an artist who likes to do accessible, R-rated stand-up. Yeah. But... Amy Schumer has evolved. The you know, inside Amy Schumer has become a very mm -hmm. sophisticated, edgy yep. comedy. Um, Absolutely. And I think the I think this film I think Trainwreck sort of brought her back to the the simpler, less uh, less uh, ambitious type of comedy. Mm -hmm. It was a lot broader. Yeah, and there was more story in it. And, I'm gl yeah. and if Judd helped her with, you know, put some more um, personal stuff in it about the father, that's that's helpful yep. in a feature film. But I definitely think it wasn't as edgy as, as Inside Amy Schumer, the tone of the subjects of the comedy here. No, they. I think they managed to include a few things like they definitely talked. It was definitely gender role reversal which is really cool they talked a lot about um especially with her job at the magazine they talked about um you know jet body image in magazines and things like that so i think they managed to include a little bit of her voice in it but yeah not as edgy but also i think it's tough because when you're going to the big screen and you have a much broader audience and not a niche audience like comedy central they might have had to go a little broader like that i think that um apatow is about making relationship like very naturalistic relationship yep. movies about how it's difficult to connect with people mm -hmm. or how it's like difficult to be on planet earth and and amy mm -hmm. inside amy schumer's like no 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 we're just gonna skewer what's going on right now because it's bullshit uh it, those are yeah. two different Dif aims different those mandates. are different totally. agendas yeah. and what's really yeah. cool is that mm, i mean uh, to me his this was his agenda or this is his agenda for I her agree. i agree uh, yeah. i want you to open up amy i want you to and you know the whole the yeah. whole background on this is that he heard her on howard stern and loved her talking vulnerably about her dad and about mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know just that relationship and um, and he's like, I want to, I want to kind of crack her open. I think you know, and kind of get yeah. to the other side of Amy Schumer because there's part of every comedian that we have. You know, there's a guarded side. There's that hard candy shell, and you're not. Nobody's getting in here. You know, like that's kind yeah. of what stand up yeah. is. And then this movie is getting inside her. Um, so this is actually mm -hmm. yeah. inside Amy Schumer. Yeah, you know, Judd, Ap yeah. Judd, Judd Apatow is the guy who brought us freaks and geeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he cares about story. Yeah. He cares about drama. Um, and but then he got really, really zo zoomed in on hard R comedy and being the the king of that. And so I think mm -hmm. he's, you know, if you look at funny people and if you look at um, what was the other one? Almost forty. This is 40. this is forty. Um, yeah. Both of those have a little bit more story than mm -hmm. a straight up broad comedy like an Adam Sandler comedy even though Adam Sandler yeah. is in funny people but like yeah, that's, you know the high that's concept stuff yeah that's what I loved about this and something like Bridesmaids which she also produced right I believe or directed um, is that it's so much about relationships not only a romantic relationship but relationships with your family and with your friends and yeah. even sometimes with yourself and I, th and I think that's what made this movie so much more realistic um or more but, I, but I don't think we should kid ourselves. The feature film comedy, like you were saying, is 
just less edgier than TV, okay? Yeah. You know, they can't take as many risks. No way. With I that. mean, and it, and yeah. it has to do with the process of, of developing a feature film and the amount of money and the studio's influence because these are the th- oh, this yeah. film is filled with the best comedians we have. Like, just mm-hmm. everybody's in this, and and Apatow is our best comedic director for feature films, and the thing comes off, you know slightly daring at moments. I mean, what was the most the edgiest joke in in the the movie? I don't I don't remember being I don't ever oh, I thought uh, the funnest. I mean, the funnest is the grand finale. Like that's so fun, the dance. That yes. was a great yes. finale. That was that's so like big great. and ridiculous. To me that I thought the whole thing mm-hmm. was going to be that and you call it train wreck. Like I was ready for just craziness or like a girl completely yeah. out yeah. of control and like just And I thought mm-hmm. I too also thought that there she could have been more of a train wreck. Yeah, yeah. Right? Aspects. All she did yeah. was drink a lot and sleep around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was, there was not. She didn't end up in, in you know, in Mexico and Tijuana and like like se- selling a an organ or something. Yeah. Like that. It, it, Again, but would that have been too much? Again, would that not have been realistic or relatable? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, comedy is about uh, some funny. Some people like hit that. bottom. Uh, like there's yeah. and I, and the, <laughs> not that bottom. Maybe that far bottom. <laughs> do, uh, Car, do you have both of your kidneys? <laughs> I'm just curious. All you need is a quarter of one. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. So what this film I think lacks. Well, I want to get into like our beat sheet so we go through the structure of the story. But yeah. um, what Jap- Apatow brings as as a pro is you know we get a very high joke density. Okay, you get mm-hmm. he does a great job leaving room for improvisation. There's definitely improv jokes in this film. He's got incredible comedic timing in his scenes. He knows how to run a set for comics to make it funny uh, and to improve from the script to something greater. But yeah, his mm-hmm. comedic voice and Amy Schumer's original comedic voice are very similar. The R-rated, yeah. inappropriate drug and sex comedy. Um, but at the end of the day, this is just a this is kind of just an R-rated rom-com, isn't it? It's a relationship movie. To me, it's just um, a it's a sweet relationship I think movie. But again, I don't think it's the traditional rom-com in that it's about falling, like literal a significant other or like romantic relationship because it's a lot about the relationships with her father and her sister and herself. So yes, it's I'd say it's a relationship I thought the sister movie. relationship was barely there. I thought the father one was the B story, so it was present. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it's like, like her relationship with herself and like improving herself and getting to yeah it was definitely much you know? more I th- it was somewhere between like a maturation plot coming of age kind of thing and a, mm-hmm. a romantic comedy but it follows most of the classic beats of a rom-com here what did you guys think of bill Hader? loved him loved role? him oh, actually yeah. at one point he, for I me he became him. the protagonist um, because yes. he had so yeah. much to lose, and his like that scene where mm-hmm. he like can't do the surgery, and like surgery. oh my heart, I, because he stayed up all night <laughs> worried about his relationship. Like Jesus, that was so human and so great. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was. You guys are so sweet on Bill. Re- I think he's one of the greatest living comics, and yes. I'm I, I'm I think he was completely wasted in this role. What? Absolutely, oh, no. he was. They barely gave him any place to be funny, to do the Bill Hader thing. He was playing. They could have got any you know decent looking geeky Hollywood actor to play this role. I don't know. I think this could have been a shot at like a more, I guess, thorough or, or deeper acting, like for a character, a deeper character. And I thought he did re- really well, or maybe like a more yeah. It was a regular. Role. It was a serious was role, but he he's one of the funniest guys we have alive. And and they write his role. He's the straight man throughout this whole movie. He's ba- he's the straight I man to Amy's I, I train wreck. I think it made me respect him even more to see him in a completely different role. And the fact that he nailed Great. it. Great, I, I respect I don't know. him. I really yeah, I'm so glad really he could do it. straight and not just be goofy and make faces and. Imp- impersonations we knew we could do that but that's not what i want from him I, it, this goes to what i was saying earlier yeah, i kind of wanted more edgier comedy to the train wreck i thought bill Hader was gonna tear it up and bill Hader was just a straight man and that's i don't know i was disappointed by but that we needed that like Kara said we needed him to be that straight man because in a way 
Amy was the antagonist. She was the anti-hero. So we needed him to be that straight man and not That's fine, comic. but you don't need to hire Bill Hader to be that guy. He he has so much more to offer. Their chemistry was so good though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. For romance, uh, maybe. Yeah. I, I like I, I liked his it? goofy face. He's got that goofy like that overbite yeah. and like the big <laughs> eyes or <laughs> like <laughs> and like and then he's just playing this like kind of boring dude. Like I I like that. It works <laughs> for me. Like it it seemed like yeah. real life. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, but there yeah. wasn't that much meat in that for him to play off of. I mean, I it, it seemed like, I mean, and there's something present in this story. And th- the fact that Amy Schumer has a, the sole writing credit on this, is, I think, is misleading. Because yes. There's a good third of this movie that is absolutely Judd yes. Apatow stuff. Like, all the stuff with the athletes, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. All the injection of like the Knicks and LeBron James, um, it seems first of all like an overt attempt to get the men to show up mm-hmm. for a rom com. Mm-hmm. I actually mm-hmm. heard like a millennial young woman say on the subway, "You're gonna love it." Like LeBron James is in it, you can t- <laughs> in, and your boyfriend's gonna love it. Like I've heard someone say that, and so, and I don't know that it served the train yeah, wrecked idea. I don't know, because going off of the athlete, I could also totally see Amy saying something like, oh, man, like, I got to have a broader audience. I might as well just throw athletes in there. And then they actually did, like, as a joke. You know what I mean? I, I could see it kind I, of I think what she too. said early in the character was, like, I think sports is stupid and people who mm-hmm. watch them are, you know, of lesser <laughs> intelligence or no, something like that. Like, I think yeah. that's what yeah. she thinks of sports. Maybe. Did you guys like, hear about this controversy today? There's an Anne Hathaway joke in the movie. And Anne uh, yeah. Hathaway's like, what the fuck? You know, that. like, okay. And then oh, there's a joke about Oscar. why you he, he's carrying Holding around his statue. Award. You're carrying it around like Anne Hathaway at the Oscar party. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, what's the controversy? Um, well, yeah. she was kind of hurt by that, or like Anne Hathaway Aww. tweeted about that. Like, Aww, well, yeah. I hope when you win your Oscar, Amy, which I'm sure you will, because you are brilliant. Maybe you'll be carrying around your Oscar too. Um, and then Amy was like. Sorry, like Judd Apatow made me put that joke in there, and I was like, "Ew!" Well, I, I'm as a comedian, like I just no fucking man is gonna make me put a joke in my movie. But Car, that's how it happens. But again, so. I think what David was saying, it comes down to everyone who's who's funding this. It's the network, it's the studios. Unfortunately, it's less of an like, independent vision than yeah. inside Amy yeah. Schumer. So when they say yeah. written by Amy mm-hmm. Schumer, I just think that yeah, that's bullshit. I think right that she has the sole writing credit. Like Judd is all over this thing. Right. I feel like the whole development, like most. A lot of producers are going right, to be all over right. it, and I'm yeah. sure they had. Some I mean, other I'm sure. I'm, she, she deserves, I mean, she's got to get that credit for for her for reason, her yeah. uh, for her career. But you know, jokes like that. I mean, even even the fact that she admitted that she didn't put that joke in. That's is that is that that is that is that girl on girl violence joke making fun of Aunt, Which making fun of Anne Hathaway's Oscar trophy. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't. I don't know. I mean, mm. I honestly, it didn't phase me that much. Honest. I was just like, oh, like I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just like picking a certain celebrity who they could, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of. But uh, again, was it hatred though? Was it girl on girl hate? It could have just been like Anne Hathaway is very classy and she like. Well, yeah, can't we have know. fun with one another? <laughs> like, what's it? So this is a thing. Yeah, is women are. I mean, it's obviously like, yeah. overly sensitive. And Anne Hathaway had yeah. to tweet about it. But that could and also defensive. sound like she was joking too, though, because she could honestly be joking too, because she said Amy was brilliant in the tweet. So that could be like. There yeah, is this ahead. thing in Hollywood right now, like women, we feel so under siege that like we gotta band together, and if you don't band together, you're yeah. betraying your kind. Like I, but I, I feel it as a comedian sometimes. I feel like, like uh oh. Yeah, but I feel like that's not doing a service to each other either because we should be able to help critique each other and call each other out and improve each other. You know, I feel like just kind of banding together doesn't help our cause any much. We should support each other, but we shouldn't. The goal be is to be to funny. Each other Isn't the goal? Each other. Shouldn't yeah, the exactly. finish line be funny? Like, what's the funniest joke? In, even mm-hmm. if it is offensive. Yeah. And what was there was a line there's yeah. a line in 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 Trainwreck where she's like you're setting us back you know we we're gonna lose the vote because of you guys <laughs> yes. right she says that to the Knicks yeah. girl she's like we're gonna lose yeah. the vote because of you yeah. guys and at the end we've got that great set piece where she's a Nick girl yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's great so, yeah 
I like that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, if it's fun, and also if it's funny, we're gonna give you a pass. Like, as a woman, like, oh, if it's a funny, mm-hmm. offensive joke, like, if it's really funny, I, I'm okay with it. Yeah, because like we can take it. Yeah, yeah we got this. We don't. I have agree. To be too um, mm-hmm. who was the redhead friend? Who was this actress? Vanessa Bayer. She's incredible. Yes, yes. And yes. And so <laughs> underused in this movie. I wanted her to yes. be like yeah, yeah. the best friend. Who is con- like mm-hmm. the sister? Um, she's a great actress, yeah, Brie Larson. Larson awesome. But I, mm-hmm. I, I just wanted uh, that redheaded funny woman as the main best friend in this because I couldn't get it enough of her. Perfect. And 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 yes. next to Tilda Swinton, Tilda Swinton <laughs> is killing it in this movie. Yeah. She is <laughs> such a chameleon. She's, she's amazing. Right? She did Devil Wears Prada better than anyone has yet. Yeah, but that's like the mm-hmm. she was such a uh, stereotype, such a walking cartoon of the bitchy editor at the fancy magazine. Like she, to me, it was those were the lines. Some of her lines I would cringe at because it was you can really have fun making fun of media in New York City, and to me it was just a little mm-hmm. too like too much, too over the top. I didn't. There was a lot of funny stories like they were gonna do. <laughs> Remember yeah, the stories no, that, that won awesome. out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, are you gay or is she just boring or something? Right, right. Like the 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 yeah. the, the, um, the uh, Michael Jackson abused children. Where are they now? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm friends with one of them. I'll call him up. But don't here's yeah. my concern with that. Her writing for Snuff, like Amy Schumer in real life makes fun of Snuff, or they're making fun of Snuff, right? They're making fun of men's magazines. But that's okay. what the, that's one of the one of the stories is that she wants to. Become, I didn't get that that was a men's magazine. A, it, yeah, it, I didn't get that either. Was it supposed to be like stuff magazine? Is that? Yeah, it's like that, um, why your girlfriend is bored. Is your what, what, what? I'm trying to remember. I thought it was a men's magazine, or like jerking off, jerking okay, off in the office, and like. Oh, that was great! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've already started my research. <laughs> That guy's brilliant too. Yeah. He was on Girls. Yeah. That, that guy was so funny every time he showed yeah. up. Yeah. But it, my point is, like, I don't under, I didn't, I wasn't rooting for her to get ahead at this magazine. And when it started to fall apart, I didn't care. I thought the mm-hmm. st- script would be stronger if you gave this character, the Amy character, something she really wanted, which would be stand up. Which would be like, like she's Absolutely. an open micer and she has a big audition. And, you know, or like, I don't, to me, there'd be more at stake. I, um, so that when her absolutely. relationship starts to, like, hurt her or, you know, things start to fall apart for her, it's really, like, really unfortunate. I didn't, I didn't. I totally, I'm sorry. I, that was one of my notes also, was the whole time I kind of kept asking myself, what exactly does Amy want? Because there was a lot of things very lightly that she wanted, but not one driving goal. Yeah. And so I kind of didn't understand the direction until kind of towards the middle. Um, so yeah, I, I do completely agree with Cara. I think we should, I think her being a writer and wanting to be a writer and have a voice came a little late, perhaps. And if that was developed more, that would have been a very strong momentum. You know, I think the magazine, you know, in terms of the Blake Snyder beat sheet, we're going to get to that. The, the second item in the beat sheet is the theme stated. And I kind of had trouble finding the theme early on. Usually theme is stated in the first five minutes. But at the end of the film, somebody uh, is telling her what the magazine is. And, I, and you realize that like, the magazine represents her journey. The magazine itself is not trying to be good journalism. Someone says, they, I forget who says it, if it's, the sister she's like oh if you don't try then you can't fail that's all that that magazine is doing they're not even trying to be smart or interesting mm-hmm. and that's that's her theme that's amy's theme in this yeah in this um in this movie her character arc is learning that uh that that, to try. that she has to try to put herself out there be yeah more yeah that's interesting so, the, the theme that absolutely. i wrote down was monogamy isn't realistic that's stated in the opening first ah, right, right, right up, up front, front. Yeah. yeah and so then you flip it which is mm-hmm. monogamy is real or that's the question is it realistic will she open her heart to it so that to me was the the yeah. theme absolutely great absolutely that that's right it. that's yeah. right and colin quinn does it right up front yeah. that's great yeah. mm-hmm. uh did you guys have an opening image what was the opening image for train ride? they're two sisters on the car right? yeah on the car with her father mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like like the family right and if yeah oh that's true and then the closing is her and her new family like her and her and aaron yeah 
because I think yeah. I think that's great. I think it's a great bookend because at one point, um, Amy is mad at her sister Kim, and her sister Kim is like, "What? You're mad at me because I got had a kid, got married, and had made my own family? That's what people do." Yeah. And this whole movie, every time uh, Aaron is. Um, every time Amy's character tried to do, uh, uh, every time Aaron's character asked Amy to do something realistically getting her into a relationship and then, you know, possibly like having a family, she was clueless about it. Right. And her friend was clueless. Like he called you. He's like, I'm <laughs> calling the cops. Right. Like, cause you must yeah. be a stalker. So she doesn't even understand the idea of having the family. And so the idea that our opening image was your old family and then growing up is yep. being vulnerable enough to find your new family. That's a good opening and closing image. Oh, well, also, yeah. and more specifically, the family was falling apart in the opening image. It was the dad mm. revealing that we're getting divorced and mm. here's yeah. why. And I have all these women in my life. <laughs> it was just like this horror <laughs> so show. Dolls. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> with the doll. Yeah. Yeah. And then and it the, closes so with the cheerleaders. It's like oh, that goes with the together. cheerleaders. Yeah. Right, right. The cheerleaders are like the dolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say coming together as opposed to falling apart, but okay. <laughs> sure. Um, so the setup for Trainwreck is pretty straightforward, right? Um, Amy is... She drinks too much. She parties too much. And she particularly likes to sleep with guys with no strings attached she has like this thing about staying over mm-hmm. um she is uh she she has several like escape mechanisms that are very funny um and she works at this magazine that uh, is a men's magazine and does really superficial um pieces that's that's the setup right Yes. What's her what's her problem that needs fixing? They say that's important to be in the setup. What is we are I think we already talked about it. Maybe we can just restate it. What's her issue that she needs to figure out over the course of the movie? She can't love or she can't commit. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Talk about gender reversal, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, the whole opening montage. Yeah. I think there's plenty of women like that out there, but okay. But I mean, like gender reversal as far as as portrayed in movies. Right. Right. Reversal. Right. Absolutely. Right. That whole opening right. montage, yeah, was awesome. Like her sleeping around, everything, complete reversal. Um, I do. We, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I did feel. I don't know if they did this intentionally to show how much of a train wreck she is and how much she needed to evolve, but I did feel that based on that montage, I still or I personally didn't get enough from her emotionally, like what she wanted and what she needed to change. Right, you know? she's okay. fine, yeah. she's good. <laughs> yeah, like she's right? not like, hitting bottom yet. That's yeah. like in five years, they're, yeah. you know, like th- this isn't in, in a typical attic type of environment. Like this uh-huh. is, you're flying high. Your, your booze is working for you, your dudes mm-hmm. are working for you. And usually, you know, they say alcoholism and sex addiction is a progressive disease and like, Let's check in five years or ten years later, you know. It's true. I mean, maybe she's a little old for this behavior. Like, she's acting like she's 23, 24. But it's not. It's not. She's not in that bad shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote, like, her rock bottom is much later at the low point when she she goes to sleep with the intern. Yep. And that's not even that much (laughs) rock bottom, right? (laughs) Right. I mean, she loses the job, but... I mean, you got a dozen That's stories. That's a starting point. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got started was right. with the intern. You know? <laughs> Amy has both kissed me. She's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. And, and that's where a little bit, again, it comes to the edginess of this comedy. It's not exactly as edgy. When you think train wreck, if this was train wreck, um, you know the stand, the one-hour stand-up comedy show by Amy Schumer, or Trainwreck, the Comedy Central series. Uh, they would have gone a lot darker, I think. Um, I think it kind of matched her stand-up, though, like when she talks about sex and her relationships. Her, I think it kind her, of matched that. Her old that, stand-up, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it was, it was, it was, it was not as multi-dimensional as, as her stuff today, or as her sketch stuff today. I don't know. Um, 
you know what's funny? She's actually not a. Tra- she's actually said in interviews that this is an exaggerated version of herself. Oh, like yeah. this isn't. I'm sort of annoyed that I feel a little bait and switch here with the train wreck. Like I mean, I'm like they should call it pillow fight, fight, pillow fight. I have <laughs> medical <laughs> records that have more dramatic tension than this movie. <laughs> Like Cara's, I, like, Cara's like, I'll show you a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually legally obliged to not talk about my bottom. Like, I have actually been informed by a team of lawyers to not talk about certain portions of my life. So, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, anyway, but that's me. We're, that's we're going to so put that up in the premium content on our go. Patreon <laughs> later. <laughs> so, so... After yeah, Midnight Podcast. I, I mean, know. it comes back to that. But then we do get some great, I mean, it's great joke to joke. There's mm-hmm. a lot of joke density in this movie. There's still a lot of funny stuff. And then it gets a um, lot of heart, too, towards the end. Which and there's great. heart. A lot of heart. There yeah. is heart. Um, catalyst. What do you, you guys have for Ooh. our catalyst? Meets Mr. Doctor in his office, right? Or sent on that, yeah, sent on that mission. It's that, yeah, it's getting that mission. Yeah. I think it's given being given the assignment something she doesn't right. want to do that yeah. she doesn't want yeah, yeah. yeah. that's pretty straight because it's a she change gets... out of her element yeah mm-hmm. and she debates it right because debate comes after catalyst mm. right because yeah did they say then that she's getting the promotion or no i was going to say was that part of the debate or no i feel that's like much the later. debate okay. is will she date him i mean that's the question is is she gonna go on this journey to to monogamy I mean, that's, isn't the debate... Yeah, yeah, but that's fun in games. That's, that's so much later. Mm-hmm. I really think that th- falls into fun uh, Is she going to date him? Yeah, is she going to take this be, on? Be, because I... And we'll talk about it when we get to it. Okay? I disagree, but, but okay. But, but, but I think the, the, the journey begins when she accepts the assignment to do sports. Yes. To do mm-hmm. something yes. about sports. And she meets the guy. I know. Although, you know, you could argue that the break in a two is... When she meets Aaron, mm-hmm. but that's not so much of a choice. No. She chooses to take the assignment. Yeah, because I think um, it relates to her decision to ch- try something new. So her going into sports then is kind of related to her decision, like into monogamy later yeah. on. But yeah, I think I'll, I thought the big journey, like the hero, when it's like you're okay. Are you gonna go into this new world or are you not? Are you gonna be a hero? Are you gonna have some fucking mm-hmm. balls or are you not? Yeah. And right, like with right. the part where she grab, you know, like goes for it, is when she. You know, decides to be with this guy, right? You, that's that's like the midpoint of the movie I was when say, they right decide when to be good, yeah. in a relationship, right? When mm-hmm. he when when they they start when she said he says I want you to be my girlfriend, kind of. That's the escalation yeah. of what we're talking about. Okay, okay. So so yeah, that is another major plot point, but we're we're not there yet. They break into two. Her accepting the the assignment and then she goes in and she pretends to know about sports and he finds out right away she doesn't know anything about sports um that makes sense for me also another clue that's the break into two is that the the b story usually begins somewhere right after the break into two and what, what's our b story for for this dad yeah dad? Dad? Home, her dad. Nursing home. yeah Definitely. Yep. Yeah, and that's when it's, it started, right after that. It starts yep. right after that. Yeah. So right after Amy accepts the sports article assignment, um, they find out their dad has MS. They have to take care of him. He's at assisted living. Yep. Um, then the fun and games begin, right? Then we get the sex comedy set pieces. There's like a there's about four or five types of comedic set pieces in this show, in this film. Um, there's a sex com set piece there's family comedy there's mm-hmm. workplace comedy there's like dating comedy and then there's buddy slash sister comedy every one of the comedic scenes can fall into i think some of those and it starts off with uh in the setup we have the workplace comedy with the devil wears prada mm-hmm. and yep. tilda swinton um but then when the fun and games begin um we get the sex comedies, the first one with John Cena, the big yes. muscular dude. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys know who he is? Oh mm-hmm. yes. Oh he's a WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's like <laughs> Mr. Macho wrestler yeah. guy. Right? And the, just the comedy of him not being able to talk dirty. That was that was <laughs> that was, that was, so that was a, funny. That was a funny premise because he could only talk about sports stuff. And later they it, they escalate that to the the, the movie theater. 
where <laughs> she's trying to get him into a fight and and he can't even he's threaten right? a guy yeah. without without making it like a gay come on. So yeah. that was that was uh, that was that was good. those Again, are good. Yeah. Those are great little set pieces. Again, it was like more them. like gender reversal. It gave the guys more dimension too, which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And we got a WWE wrestler in yes. the movie, so that's for towel. the dudes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I wonder. By the way, I'm just wondering: Are dudes actually going to this movie? Because when I saw it, it was like 90 percent women on oh, Friday night. So many chicks, oh. and I I thought it was kind of awesome. And then I was like, Oh, that means that guys aren't going to this movie. But oh. it's um, I don't know. I we mean, don't know. We the don't thing know. is, it wasn't it wasn't billed as a rom com? If you bill it as a rom com. Maybe. It becomes a date movie. Yeah. If, if it becomes a date movie, then the guys go. But it, b- build okay. as um, train wreck. I don't know. It, it, it the, the poster, the one sheet looks a little bit more like kind of a stoner comedy. Yes. So I think yeah. you can get the guys out. Oh, um, I didn't know that mm-hmm. that you can get guys to go to a rom com because it's no, like they, they get dra- to, they get they, they get dragged to, to the rom com. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Right, but you don't get the 18 to 35 no. single guys. But that's right? why they have the wrestlers and the stoner comedy elements. Right, and yep. LeBron James, yep. and they have all the athletes and the Knicks yep. girls. So um, right now it looks like the opening weekend did uh, uh, $34 million, which is pretty good. Wow, awesome. Um, so I'm good wondering who's – it didn't win the weekend, but um, let's see – like as a comparison, Judd Apatow movies. Um, Forty Year Old Virgin did twenty two million when it opened in oh five. Knocked Up, which I think is like one of the is Apatow's best, did thirty million opening weekend. So yeah, this is definitely a hit for a mm-hmm. comedy. This is a huge hit. Oh yeah, um, especially with a strong female lead to have yeah. to do that well, it's mm-hmm. great. It's great Cause I mean, what other movies do we have to compare this in the strong female lead? Comedy? Bridesmaids, because it okay. was the same kind of tone. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. Maybe bridesmaids, uh, and it bridesmaids. was more recent too. Yeah. So what did bridesmaids do opening weekend? Bridesmaids. <laughs> Opening weekend had twenty six million. Yeah, so this eclipsed right Bridesmaids there. opening weekend. So wow, they've been doing so, th- so much this... promotion around it. Yeah, so, right, yeah. record breaking promotion. I yeah, think, and just... so I, th- I think, I think, um, Amy Schumer actually because she's attractive and she's she does the sex comedy and every time she does promo, she does some kind of embarrassing sex joke, and I think that'll bring in the male audience as well. Well, yeah, but also just the fan base from her show too. I think will bring it in. A That's lot of the a guys. great point. That's yeah. a great point. Male, young, eight, male, eighteen to thirty-five watch sketch comedy a lot. Yep. They and do just because that's also Comedy Central's demo, so they have a wide foundation from that, or a strong foundation. Yeah, I read that twenty-eight percent of the people that are going are going because of Amy Schumer. Like they're explicitly saying that, or you know, in the exit polls or whatever. Like, yeah. It's that's awesome. cool. It's about her. Exit polls. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are they called? What are they called? Ex- I don't know. Yeah. No. That they polls, they yeah. must be exit polls, <laughs> but I don't. Poll. I don't know where to get those. Yeah, that's cool. So slowly, the fun and games of this movie. What are some of the other fun and games before we get to the point where? Because I think our midpoint is when Aaron asks her on a date. A- she Amy to be the the girl, his girlfriend. But before that, what are some of the fun and games we get? Like in his office on the treadmill and things like that, like getting to know his world a bit more. Um, what else? When they get to meet, they're, they're, they're in a rom com, it's, it's, you know, foibles of the relationship. Yeah, and she's, you mean the, the scene where she's running on. With, yeah, with the sensors the treadmill, on her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's funny because she's out of shape. <laughs> Cause she's on a she's on a vodka diet. Oh, would you count that dinner with uh, with one of my favorite bits, the check bit, because that was she had to totally go with them for an interview. It wasn't technically a date yet, I don't think, but yeah, that no, I it's totally it's totally dating comedy, right? They yeah. get drinks, they talk about first kisses, um, and they do the check please joke, and then that's when Amy, I love that. <laughs> like, like gets in the cab with him and like it's obvious, yeah, I'm going back to your place. And he's like, uh, okay. And he just goes <laughs> along with it. And then we get the sex comedy set piece 
where they do it and she's he's kind of straight laced but she's kind of freaky <laughs> and she had that hilarious line where, where when she like straddles him she's like oh good for you oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? That's so funny. Um, but then we get the drama comes back because the pillow talk. She wants to get out, and he wants to like. Mm-hmm. Hunt, she wants her to stay over, and she's like, "Can you put the pillow between us? <laughs> Can you breathe upward towards the sky <laughs> or something?" <laughs> So, I mean, this is more, you know, this is not like the edgiest comedy. It's more like oh. funny rom-com stuff. I don't know, Cara. What do you think? Yeah. This is, their, this is their fun and games. This is the meat of the first half of this movie. Right. It's the fun and games that's appropriate for this type of, for this mm-hmm. couple. For, yep. um, I mean, they're exploring, yeah, fun and games is when you explore the, the premise or the idea of these two, of yes. this new world. Yes. Um, so I don't know how big or ridiculous you can get with a doctor and a magazine writer. <laughs> like, <I don't, laughs> um, this movie is not a huge high concept, right? It's not, yeah, they are not from opposite worlds, right? They're both she, urban professionals. They're like, yeah, yeah they're, yeah. She, she is not their lifestyle that they are. big a, she's not a, a little bit, yeah. but like we said earlier, she's not that much of a mess and he's not a fundamentalist Christian or anything like that. You know, the, the, the this is not, um, uh, right. It's not a stand up comedian and a stockbroker. Like yeah. if you had to bring your stockbroker boyfriend to an open mic like that, you know, mm-hmm. in, if you guys remember mm-hmm. Knocked Up, Knocked Up, the premise was about, like, a guy um, getting pregnant, a woman who's just way out of his league, right? Where she's just, like, so much hotter than he is, and he's, like, just a nerd and kind of a schmuck. And there is some tension about, and that's the central character arc of Knocked Up, is that he has to, like, get his act together, stop smoking weed, get a real job, and care about... You know, being a father. That kind of sounds like, in a way, Amy's arc in a way to like clean up and get serious and try harder. Yeah. 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 It's a very classic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you Are you going to grow up? Are you going to? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Set in New York City, talking about <laughs> New York City as a land of Peter Pans. Mm-hmm. True. Car, what's the what's the what what do the women call that? Oh, the, the female version of Peter yeah, Pan? Yeah, Peter Pan syndrome. I don't know. No. no Patricia Pan? One? Yeah, say Patricia. Petra. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Wendy, like Wendy, Wendy syndrome? Well, she does grow up, I think. <laughs> she does yeah. grow up. That's the trouble, right? Yeah. But no, I think the fun and games worked. It was very real, and it was, in a way, intimate. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. It just felt very real. Like, I felt really connected to these two characters. Yeah, I will say I never yeah. like um, my realness detector was like never went off. You know, like well the bullshit mm-hmm. detector when you're like, oh that, <laughs> ooh that doesn't. Well, worse. only with yeah. Tilda Swinton was like, oh lord, here we have another you know bitchy lady who's yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to remember Tilda's lines that would make me cringe, but I don't I don't have them in my mind right now. I but, thought she she was part of the, some of the best stuff of the first half, mm-hmm. the, and to me the, the 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 scene where John Cena's in the in the movie theater and he's trying to the guy's telling him (laughs) to tell amy his date to shut up and he can't be tough and everything he says to the guy his wife's like he wants to have sex with you (laughs) he just wants to have sex with you he said you know what i do to assholes i lick him he's like he wants to have sex with you it's a fun game it's a fun you know how in improv they're like find the game what's the game like that's a good there's some good good games here like the game of lebron james being cheap or him um, looking out for his buddy you know that's a fun switch like that's a fun right. thing yeah. that you can just keep playing with and get generating jokes from like once you find the game it just endlessly generates jokes Absolutely. i think you nailed it i mean that's what a feature film really is is you get an overarching that's the difference between a feature film comedy and a sketch comedy series is that you create some overarching high concept that you can stick a bunch of great sketches in and mm-hmm. you can repeat the game a couple yeah. times because you can bring it back and that's what we have here. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering what's the best one. What is the best Ooh. game? Um, 
Oh, that's tough. I think LeBron, I think the LeBron yeah. to me was sort of was fun. It was so sweet that he's yeah. like, he doesn't want his buddy to be hurt. And it was unexpected too, which was really cool. When they have yeah. the intervention yeah. and yeah. it's Chris Everett <laughs> and they're like calling it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was cute. I just didn't find it that funny. Some of the other athletes deliver the lines better john cena was way funnier he was than hilarious. lebron and then amari stoudemire was barely just there at the end for his poor knee apparently apatow is a knicks fan like it's just <laughs> he's a knicks fan he's a mets fan it's like obvious um so we get to the midpoint aaron asks amy to be his girlfriend and she's wor- she's not so sure about it and right at that point we get the beak the B story crosses because the dad falls and they have to go see him, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then we get some nursing home old people jokes. Like I remember. Old, old people having sex and he's saying, oh, yeah, when the yes. lights go out in here and it's like a Viagra party or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that when we get the dad being a being an asshole and not yeah. acknowledging his, his stepson? I thought yeah, that, that was kind that, of fun. That was a <laughs> fucked up recurring joke. I yeah. like that. That was a good, a funny recurring joke. <laughs> that it's it, Yeah, that it's a step-grandson. He doesn't even acknowledge it. Oh, when she's running with her sister. Yeah. And she's like, oh, what about those little things in a relationship that break you up? Like, I leave a tampon in the toilet. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, laughed yeah. my ass <laughs> off. It was so and not, not one of those, oh, it's almost over tampons. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's cute. It's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to name check that on our podcast. <laughs> no, that was, um, that was great. Again, so authentic, but like improv, it was, it was great. But that's, 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 that, that's, you know. That's a that's new, the, like, women comedy, like, voice that's coming out. And, thank like, you. That's what I'm scene, trying to say. And the scene that, with her and Vanessa Bayer in the bathroom talking about with yes. Johnny Depp, they'd fuck. Uh, it's totally, it's accurate, and it's fun. And, when they were talking yeah, about what? Which Johnny Depp, they'd want to hook up <laughs> with. Whatever. Yeah. Which version? Of, oh, and they, they, where they say, oh, do you have to pee? And she's like, yes. yes. And they go, and they're in the stalls together, and they're talking about that. Because that's like, so, that's just used so many times. You know, that joke about women yeah. going to the bathroom is used. So for her to play off of that, I love yes. it. Mm-hmm. it was, yes, and we like haven't seen that. It. it was great. We haven't seen that before. Again, yeah. it's like, finally, you know, the interior lives of women are funny. Externalized. And, it's, it's, it, yeah. and they're not, they're, they're something we can, we can joke about. They're not so... Uh, forbidden. Yeah. No, it was. It's awesome. It's great. Not that there isn't room to go further. Oh, absolutely. But this is a really good start. <laughs> Very good start. What do you think, Car? Oh, I, I'm still. I'm still just in love with the the. I'm seeing the blood description that she described. <laughs> um, that's that's great. That was like a water. What do you call it? A watershed moment. A high water mark yeah, in comedy. Yeah. With that that description of the bloody tampon. That was a. That's a moment. I think that we can all be proud of. That yes. we can all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. So then, so the movie starts to drag for me in the second half. Really? Um, I kind of actually felt the opposite. I thought it dragged a little more in the beginning because we didn't get enough information about her at first. And again, they could have done that intentionally. Um, but I actually thought it picked up really nicely the second half. I cared I mean, a lot it more. Got, it got more story, more drama oriented. But I, I'm in this for the comedy. I kept writing in my notes, where's the funny? You know, where's the funny? I, I, see, I see the drama. I see the story here. But that's that's... You know, in a in a feature film comedy, that's just the spine to hang some great set pieces on. And um, oh, there was a they had that one where the let's play skeletons in the closet, and she has the joke about she oh my lo- god, yeah, the condom getting stuck on her yes. cervix. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That was great. She's like, I used my finger as, as, as a, a hook. hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the wife is like, I let Tim and his brother tag team me on Christmas morning. <laughs> and it was ever. wonderful. Oh, yes. 
That was funny. Um, That's the kind of shit I want to see in this this kind of movie. Yeah, but I don't know. I think later on it stayed true to the beat sheet. Like you know, it we did. Had oh, the, kept all, all the beats. And, and it kept everything. all the beats, but I don't think it kept the funny up. And that is the hardest thing to do in two hours of comedy. It's hard to do car. It's hard to do in, in a one one hour of comedy as a stand up, right? To well, keep it yeah. to make sure that you go out on top, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To build it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You want to end with like a big, yeah, you need to crescendo it. You need to mm-hmm. end with, yeah, I, I sometimes close with a character. I close with this very high energy character and she closes it out. Or you want to close with a song. Like you want to, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's uh, talking about momentum. I didn't feel, yeah, the, I lost the, for me, I lost the momentum. I lost interest. Yeah, started a drag in the second portion. And also I felt like, okay, this idea of bad guys closing in, like mm-hmm. I, I like a really, like I love the idea of torturing a protagonist or just fucking them over mercilessly, yeah. taking away everything from them and leaving yeah. them with zero. You know, take mm-hmm. away their job, take away their love, take away their best friend. Like they've yeah. betrayed everyone. Their shitty behavior has <laughs> sent everyone <laughs> away. And they're just left to like, uh oh, I need That's to make some what changes. They did. Right, because she lost her job, she lost her sister, she lost her father, she lost the relationship. I mean, what else was there? It was a very, it was a soft version. I didn't, yeah, I I didn't feel it. it. Like it it was, it was, it was barely a conflict that she couldn't get over. And in the end, Mm -hmm. the the all is lost. The father dies, Mm -hmm. right? Get a whiff of death. Um, In the dark night of the soul, Aaron takes care of Amy. Um, she gives that eulogy that's very heartfelt. Yeah. I thought there was a great line where she said he thought he got sick because of his bad karma. Mm. I thought that was really interesting. You know, people who get sick and they think it's because of the bad things or the bad ways they behaved in life. Yeah. And I think that goes to maybe some of her, you know, the main character's guilt yeah. about not being, you know, living like a straight life. So I thought that was poignant and then mm-hmm. she gets angry at her sister and then she gets angry at 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 bill Hader for saying i love you and usually at the low point of a rom-com the couple breaks up but then it goes on for like another few scenes before they do break up and the then you get the uh uh aaron can't do his surgery because yeah. they didn't like fully break up they just had like uh like a uh, an argument, um, and then Amy can't be happy for him at at his award. Yeah, but you see, I kind of like that it, dragging and, on because it made me question, like, okay, can she really change? She's faced with all these adversities and someone who loves her. So I feel like all these. Yes, scenes- but this is bad guys close in stuff. Yeah. This is not. This is should have happened way earlier, way sooner. And okay. we're 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 nine, 90 minutes into this movie already. We're like, get mm-hmm. get on with it. Where's the finale here? Break them up. You know, send them to the pit of hell, and then let's see how she's going to get back. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, I love you, and she's like, why do you keep saying that? What's wrong with you that you love me? Like, that's low point stuff, and it should have happened like 25 minutes earlier. I don't know. I don't know if breaking up on the funeral would have been enough or enough of a reason to break up right there. I don't know. Again, I think they needed, they needed those fight scenes and Amy being selfish and signs that she's not going to change for Bill Hader's character to then finally and ha- I don't know I, I know, no I agree but they wouldn't have earned it by then but that's why you, you gotta put some of those scenes before Earlier? the low before okay. the low point instead of just uh, some of the other the softer stuff in the bad guys close in and I think uh, I agree okay. with Kara on that that a lot of the bad guys close in wasn't building fast enough to get us to that real harsh low point um, oh, okay gotcha one moment I had there was one honest moment that I thought was actually an interesting statement. Um, when they are arguing, um, I remember when they're at the party and um, the sister's husband accidentally says, oh, keep her away from the pro athletes. Yeah. And he's like, that's my girlfriend. He's like, oh, I was just making the jokes that she makes. Uh, you know, I'm loose. I'm a whore, whatever. Those are the jokes she makes. And and Bill Hader's face was just like, he was saying, it's not okay. Like, you can't make those jokes. It's not okay to make those jokes. And I thought that was actually like a broader statement. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that was society. just like, and, okay. and about, you know, the, the stereotypes of jokes that are, that we use, you know, in comedy or in, in, in storytelling, 
in general. It's like, yeah, it's okay to be self-deprecating, but you can't do that. You can't, you can't make that joke. Yeah, it's just like in group versus out of group. Like you can't make the joke if you're out of the group or out of mm-hmm. that. See, yeah. I just saw it as evidence that just how awesome Aaron is, or what a wholesome mm-hmm. guy he is. Mm-hmm. Like I, it didn't to me. I just was kind of staying in the movie with that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is in the movie. Yeah, it was kind of like maybe perhaps Amy talking directly to us too, or yeah, like you said, like a larger message that this is her voice. Another know. another thing I thought was a good statement was. Um, when they are arguing, at one point it comes back when she and she's like, "What's wrong with you that you love me?" And he's like, "I don't, I don't mind that you had you used to drink. I don't mind that you slept with a lot of guys." And she's like, "You don't." And he's like, "How many guys?" <laughs> you, she's like, "How many guys have you slept with?" He's like, three. And she's like, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. Right? And then he asks, "How many guys?" And she never answers. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there thinking. Oh, I want I, you know. I want some number. I want I. I want to. I want some. I want to think of her. You know, uh, uh, think about how big a train wreck she is. But they don't answer that question. And I, you know, I sat there and sort of, sort of like huh. thought of, thought about my judging myself in that sense and saying it's actually a statement that it's not okay that that should matter at all. And they don't answer in the movie. Yep. And I thought that was also another statement. Absolutely. Because saying a number would have reinforced the stereotype. Like, oh, my God, she slept with this many guys. Yeah. Right. Like, that the, the, the question's okay to ask. I think it would, to me, it was a missed opportunity for a joke. Like, if she, um, they have this, oh, God. Okay, sorry. Real, gotta, gotta get real inside baseball and sex addiction here, guys. But, <laughs> Talk to um, me. Do Talk it. to me. It's like, well, no, like one of the characteristics, it's like if you keep a log book, if you know your count, what's up with that? Like, it's like this conquest thing. And so it might be if she's like 184. Like, you're right, like, right. I don't know. Like, because sometimes people, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But that could have been a little out of character, too, because was she technically a sex addict or just a train wreck? So I feel like as a train wreck, she's just going to be sleeping with people and not really counting because it's about in the moment how she's feeling about herself and hooking up with people. So she might not know. But there's, you know? I, I do agree. There's a there was chance for joke there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but again, yeah, we're getting more vulnerable, well, or like they're trying to have these like real see these like heartfelt scenes. But like, and, yeah, and like you know what, this Cara, is a comedy. You, Serve and you the know jokes. what, Cara, in the third act, she doesn't end up like at a sex addicts anonymous meeting. She doesn't end up at mm-hmm. AA. She just sort of throws her bottles away, like. The the stakes for her are never yeah. that high. It they as you, you said in the beginning, she doesn't have a very low rock bottom at all, right? She kind mm-hmm. of sleeps with the intern. So this movie was not trying to go full God, train wreck, or I yeah. guess I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not an addiction story. Like it, to me, it's yeah. not. I mean, those of us in the rooms in recovery for intimacy issues, like we know what's going on here, and we're you know like we can. Yeah, to me, it's sort of like, yeah, you're, you know, this is, it's classic. It's so classic. Um, but that's not what this movie is portraying. This is not, yeah, it's not an addiction recovery yeah. movie. Um, so I, but. Um, and and then a couple scenes later, we're doing Amy and Aaron, lonely montage, classic, like. Rom-com. Rom-com. And I found myself writing, why isn't this funny? Like, they could do a funny version of this. And I found myself, you know frustrated with Apatow you know I found myself yeah. thinking make me laugh funny man you know but like then that's again, like we said Apatow is like the king of into like of relationships so you know like girls and they have th- those really intimate dramatic moments uh, like, but girl- to stop that I'm sorry I'm so annoyed <laughs> like Apatow fucking make way for people with real issues um and real drama like I'm just kind of bored I don't think I point. agree I think the like, drama I think you, if you look at it at, at funny people and you look at this is forty. The drama in there, it's not that heavy. I but think. But again, we're thinking on a much larger scale. This is a niche television. It's, t- it's movies. They so can't needs, get that. But, but we're judging it be. all at the same level now. How how do we not judge it all together? All the the mediums are all coming together. I'm coming. I'm going to this movie, and I'm. But it's a such higher budget and so many stakes. So many more stakes. This is budget. all about the like, writing. It's about the the story that they mm-hmm. that they won't tell. It's not about the action set piece that they don't have enough money to film. 
This is mm-hmm. this is about not going there. Um, Again, yeah, why why there's... isn't she a sex addict? Wasn't why isn't she totally in recovery? Oh God! Why, oh, why is, I'm like, it could be so it, funny. It could be so right? funny be if so she goes funny. to an yeah. SA meeting. Right, um, and, and why yeah. isn't and he like a total straight arrow? Like, it, is if it's true that that doctor is only had sex with three women, he should be a lot more uptight. He should be like yeah. super. Yeah, uptight. it's called sexual anorexia, and they're in the rooms as well. Okay, it's like two yeah. sides of the same. I thing. think like, I just want to just do another podcast ent- entirely. <laughs> let's just like, <laughs> let's just like cut off onto the sex sex <laughs> addict so podcast. There's podcast. so much stuff, you guys. I have so many books there's on things it. Things I don't know. That's really interesting. You've got to yeah. teach us. <laughs> um, <laughs> But finally, th- this 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 low point and and like dark night of the soul drags on so long. What's our break into three? Break into three is is that the new information? Yeah, it, it, it's 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 preceded by the new information. Why does she throw out her bottle? She throw. Why does she decide to it's get him because back? Because of the step. Son, which I thought was a great idea. Oh him, yeah, he gets her the right, new right, right. Information with That's the, the new information, yeah. right? What does he say? He like plans it out before he makes it, and then he also included her in his life. He like made a room for her in his Minecraft house or whatever. Right. He says, "I I I make a plan before mm-hmm. I go and do it, so I'm not just winging it." Winging it. it. Yep. And then he said, yep. "I also made room for you, so in my family, right?" Mm-hmm. And so that is like the, that's great. That that's that's great, Melissa. That's our new information. I love that, and I I love that he's the character who provided that. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so then we we kick off our finale and they fast forward to weeks later. Um, Amy's cleaned up her act. She stopped drinking as much. I mean, I guess she did weed. She did. Was there was there ever cocaine in this movie? Yeah, with the nope. I the, intern, the intern, the intern snorts Adderall, the cocaine. He said it was Adderall, it was Adderall. Or, or there was one thing with d- Dad's cocaine, and she, oh, yeah. she, she snorted a little bit, but you know, it didn't go there. It really didn't go there. Um, then Aaron meets Amy out on the court, and she does the finale, the Nick dancing finale, which I thought was a great oh, way to end the it movie. It was awesome. Awesome. That's a good closing. That you, was you, part of the movie, baby. Yes, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Yeah, so went, fun, so playful. So, yeah. you were you were saying, Kara, that you want to go out with dancing, or you want to go out with like a character, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that was great. It was just mm-hmm. fun, and it was, you know, and it, Amy's character not being a great dancer, but trying, <laughs> and but it was also very regal. Yeah, it was her being vulnerable in another way. You know, rather than hooking up with people and being vulnerable in that sense, it was her being vulnerable, showing and doing something that she's not good at, or doing yeah. something for someone else. I, I don't know. I thought it was like good. Something nice sporty, circle. yeah. Yeah, and it's also like something s- sexy in a new way. Like there's yeah. just like hooking up with someone and not being very vulnerable, and then there's like being sexy in a way that you've learned a whole dance and are putting it on for someone. <laughs> oh my god! I just thought it was so ridiculous and hilarious and wonderful. And yeah, it was physical, it was and that's what you want for a feature film when you have a lot of money, right? You can shoot in Madison Square Garden, mm-hmm. and you can get the Knicks girls, and you can do a whole set piece finale. Um, and then then the somersault flip, right? <laughs> she goes to do the flip, the, to, to do the, the flipping, like, slam dunk, and just falls right on her face. I love Bill Hader when he's like, people usually go up, but you managed to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. End on physical comedy. There wasn't, oh, an, so there good. was, there was, there was only a little bit of physical comedy in this movie, but when they did, it was pretty good. It was great. So. And again, I love that interaction between Bill Hader and Amy at the end with that, like face to face. Again, so real. Just you could really feel connected to them. I don't know. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I was really rooting for them. I really mm-hmm. like. I really felt for them like i really yeah. there was something i was very yeah in like, a soft romantic comedy kind of way in like the notebook kind of way <laughs> but or I like more connected to them as people not even just the relationship like in the notebook like i felt really connected to them as people yeah. and rooted for them as people too but mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't i don't go to movies in order to feel connected to people i, I have meetings for that <laughs> like <laughs> i've got other things to feel connected and hear about people's relationships mm-hmm. i go to movies to be entertained to be transported to go yes. on a journey Yes. to like feel something mm-hmm. um and i didn't if we're if we're, if that's the um what do we call that if that's the 
the judge, the bar. Uh, it I, to me, this movie didn't didn't cross it. Um, yeah, it was enjoyable. I, mean, I was like, it okay. was enjoyable, and there were some funny stuff. But I was with with all the comedic talent. I was expecting to laugh a lot much, a lot harder, a lot. I, I was expecting to be shocked. I wanted to be mm-hmm. shocked mm-hmm. when I, I when I saw like knocked up the first time, and when I saw uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. There were jokes in there that made me like cringe and laugh and like, oh my god. And I don't think there's much in this movie that really made me feel like they were pushing edgy. But okay. it ended really nice, and it was sweet and. You know, it gave that rom-com feeling at the end. Mm-hmm. So I think at the end, it was really just an edgy rom-com. You know what? I want to... Um, oh, I'm going to be go super critical here. Judd Apatow, not the funniest stand-up. Not the funniest guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wonder if that's kind of what's... Go, if he, this dude has his limits. He's a great producer. He gets along well with people. He knows how to put together. He knows how to write a script. But there's something not ridiculous and insane about Judd Apatow. He's a nice guy. But like in order, I think in order of like, like well, really good I, comedies, he comedians, put a project the together. best stand-up he, comedians are insane. They're he, bonkers. Yes, but, it, right? but again, you have to consider again the platform. And again, they're at a multi-million dollar I, like, mm. studio. I don't think they can take those risks. No, it's not I think like a could, niche network. Mm, I think it could I get ridiculous. Know. I think there's something about Judd Apatow that's he's trying to do something mature all the time. And like, dude, don't... I don't know. I think Stop doing... Yeah, I, I would appreciate it if he would stop trying to do drama and just do comedy and do comedy hard. Yes. And, and, and just yeah. and push it. And you know what? You've got someone like Amy Schumer who can mm-hmm. be pushed. You, you've got plenty of other talent out there that can be pushed. If you look at funny people, to me that movie was a failure because he had a bunch of comedians who could do funny and he turned it into a drama. The second half of the funny people, it wasn't funny at all. It was, okay. It's like he, he's like, guess what? I know I brought you in with all these com- comics, but I wanted to tell you, you know, being a comic isn't all fun and games. You know, we're sad clowns. You know what? Great. But that's, you know, show me, you know, like show me that in your documentary. In your in your feature film comedy, I want edgy comedy all the way through. And because the, the story stuff is not that original. I don't know because I actually like the drama. I like the character development because without it, then it'd just be like an hour of stand-up, which Amy already does. You know, I think that's why we watch movies, to see people struggle and to see them arc and to see them develop. So I'm to- I am was really happy with more of that development and not just comedy all the way around. I think it added some dimension to it. I'm know. thinking of those like old school 1950s rom-coms where they were very funny and very playful. And you also felt that these were human beings. There was some- You could still feel... Um, that there was a journey for that. You don't need you don't need a whole fifteen minute of fight d- dynamics and oh we're taking a two break, day break. You just need like one sentence to have yeah. somebody get vulnerable mm-hmm. and let them know. You know, like I, I'm just that he's sort of creating a new genre to me mm-hmm. in a way. And I'm and I think that's great in a way. That's kind of cool to explore and see if yeah. you can add something new to the universe. And this is where he's at right now. But like, is it is it is it moving for me? Is it like, uh, do I want to go see it again? No, mm-hmm. you know? It was like an experiment. To me, it's just like, it's an experiment in cinema. Okay. I would recommend this movie to my friends who are not film or comedy people. If people ask me, is this a good movie? I'd say, yeah, it's a good movie. But if anyone who I know is a screenwriter, is a filmmaker, who's an artist, and says, how was Trainwreck? I'd be like, eh, you know? It didn't. It, it had so much potential, and it didn't. It didn't. It didn't get there. Okay. Um, it had a couple of good jokes. I'm like genuinely interested when you guys say you want something that like a comedy that goes comedy hard all the way around transport you. Like, what's a movie that comes to mind? Like, I'm just trying to understand like to compare it. Like, what kind of a movie? <laughs> well, some yeah. of the early Woody Allen movies okay. were just playful and fun, or like. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Annie Can you Hall, have hard comedy all yeah, the way around, I, without no. heart, without character development, without relationships and drama. I don't know. I don't know if it'd be an interesting. I think. I, I think. Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. I thought Half Baked was pretty hysterical all the way through, and okay. I was just like the classic stoner comedy. But it, at the time, it pushed it pushed limits. I thought, um, yeah, at the feature film level, you don't get as much edginess. 
Um, but I, what I'm saying is I don't think that we, we can forgive you for that excuse anymore, you know, when you've got edgy shows like on Comedy Central, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like Another Period or, you mm-hmm. know, shows like... Or like, like Inside Amy Schumer. <laughs> Key, Key and Peele in Inside Amy Schumer, right. Um, and, I think, and I think the rest of the broad comedy world is finding this out too. SNL... Mm-hmm. definitely is is ha- being held to task for the level of comedy that we expect. I think uh, late night, all the late yeah. night shows are being held to a higher bar. And now. isn't that the struggle that movies are dealing with in general is trying to move forward and succeed in this now kind of niche environment? And like yeah. you said earlier, a lot of networks, they have to specialize. They have specialized content. So Comedy Central can say, yes, we can have edgy material, but can Universal Studios or can a large studio specialize? Their specialization is that it's broad and that it's going to get a shit ton of audience members and make a lot of money. So it has to be broader. That, That's that that is problem. also their Achilles you know. heel. That is yeah. also the thing oh, that absolutely. keeps their art from being edgy. Mm-hmm. It's the thing that keeps them from, you know, uh, breaking down barriers and doing new stuff. And yeah. I, you know, and I, and I, I think Amy Schumer and Judd Apatow are people who can do that, and definitely Bill oh, Hader yeah. is somebody who can do that. Um, but uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just look forward to a new season of Inside Amy Schumer. <laughs> Last comments, guys. Last things. Something you you loved about the movie. Something you didn't like about the movie. Melissa, you're first. All right. Um, what I loved again the gender reversal. Just seeing a woman who's allowed to be a train wreck, and we watch her grow. And I don't know. I think that was great. I think it's about time we saw that in a movie. Um, was that? Was it? Did it? See? Oh, see. See. I'm. And I'm gonna make my point again. Compare. Okay. And you reminded me of this. Just compare it to Broad City. Yep, I was just going to say that. They're Absolutely. they're train wrecks. That whole yep. series is about them being a train wreck, but they pushed the they pushed the mm. boundaries further than this movie did. Yes, don't they again, on, on you... a weekly basis oh absolutely absolutely again it's it's the platform could you imagine a broad city movie they couldn't do it the same way as their show you know i don't know no i i think that's it's very similar to broad city in this essence again it's that women who are allowed to be train wrecks and to not be perfect which is awesome and it's seeing them yeah make mistakes you know sleep around it's great um without judgment which is great the thing i didn't like i would say again was understanding her emotionally not early enough on Mm -hmm. and maybe a more refined goal i would have liked because i really didn't know what she exactly wanted until much later in the film so cool yeah Kara, how are you yeah i'll say i think um (laughs) this idea of like the apathetic protagonist like that's really hard like the protagonist is like i'm totally fine with my fucked up intimacy issues and drinking like they but they took that on and I, I like that, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, but that does give you a, that's a, a challenge to have as a protagonist yeah. as somebody who's like not that driven. Uh, but that's <laughs> also kind of where we're at as a nation is a yeah. lot of people aren't that driven. Um, so yeah, I'm also, <laughs> on a personal note, I like how we keep calling people train wrecks and I'm like, that is not, that is not at all a train wreck. <laughs> that is, I am not seeing how that's a train wreck. Like I, <laughs> Broad City is, those girls are doing, those girls are doing great. Like they're doing well. Like that, I, would, they're, I aspire. They're fine. I aspire they're to that. fine. <laughs> so where's your pilot, Kara? Where's yeah, right? the true train wreck pilot? I told you, I had a team of uh, volunteer lawyers for the arts shut down a whole screenplay I was working on um, like I so I'm working on it you know I'm working on it but there's some legal change, concerns. change the <laughs> names to protect the innocent I have to change uh-huh. whole countries to protect the innocent yeah. I travel some in my journeys <laughs> and like okay and I got to know certain countries really well and anyway anyway the, uh, okay so uh, but you know what I'm gonna sell like Good. We're celebrating minor train wrecks, major train wrecks. Like, I'm really happy because yeah. now, you know, it gives me um, inspiration to work on mine. Uh, Absolutely. Which I should I call Pillow go. Fight. I should call it Pillow Fight. <laughs> and then people are like, that was not a Pillow Fight. <laughs> that girl was fucking... The irony. Yeah. The irony. I love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think there was good comedy in this great re- comedy writing. It was mm-hmm. solid. You know, it's hard to keep the funny going for two hours straight. Um, And for the most part, Amy and Judd got that done. Um, 
I think it wasn't as edgy as we would have liked it, but you know, that's just because Amy is so awesome in her day job, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's a, a credit to her. She, she raised her own bar. Yeah. Um, I think uh, there were a couple missteps. I think one, if you want to talk character and drama, Mr. Apatow, the classic, you know, something you need in a rom-com is you need us to believe from the very beginning in a romantic comedy or a romance mm -hmm. that the main character, the two main characters are meant for each other. And I never figured out why Aaron would, what he saw mm. in Amy. That is mm -hmm. a classic, and you know, if you want to write, yep. I'm a drama writer. You need, we don't know, the whole time I'm like, what is he into her for? Like, I don't even know if he's into her because she's crazy, because she's pretty, because she, there wasn't even superficial reasons for him to be into her. Gotcha. There was no reasons to, for him to be into her. So that's why it's hard to connect for us dramatically. At the end of the day, this guy's got it, kind of got it all. He's a doctor. He hangs out with celebrities. Um, he's a little goofy looking. He's a nice guy. Yeah, maybe he wasn't flawed enough or had some had a missing piece. Or they something. weren't. They were. Yeah. They, you know, when you set up a romance, there needs to be a strong yin yang for the story to really, for us to be rooting for them the whole time. And I actually, you know, three quarters of the way through the movie, I was like, oh, he's gonna do the thing where they don't end up together. That makes sense. This will just be a coming of age moment for Amy. This movie will not be a romance. It'll just be about her getting her shit together, and that'll be deeper. Uh, but then they took the right turn into standard rom-com territory, and I was like, eh, all right. Okay. Um, I love the final set piece. Yes. Ah, so good. Bravo. So with that, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, David. For being well, on the you podcast. Thank you for having us. It was fun. We've got to do it again soon. Oh, yes. Um, the script is produced by Jordan Rosengarten and David Negrin. You can email us, fan mail us, hate mail us, comments, questions, or more questions. Pro proclamations. Yes, more questions <laughs> to scriptfeed at gmail.com. Join our Facebook page, our Google Plus page, by searching for NYC Screenwriters Collective. You can also follow us on Twitter at scriptfeed. If you live in New York City, please sign up for one of our workshops at meetup.com under NYC Screenwriters Collective. And yes, Please support the script over at patreon.com slash the script. We have so many amazing rewards for screenwriters. Um, go check us out on Patreon. Thanks so much. <laughs>